oscillation, if you like, between sentiment all on the back of news flow. And today it was negative. Once again, we're seeing consolidation, but today very much a risk-off day, and we saw all sectors losing ground, the market off by 1.6%. Part of that negativity came from a Reuters report overnight talking about uh, some comments that Nicolas Sarkozy had ma made saying that the European debt plan talks had become stuck, and so that uh, provided a bit of negativity to markets. We did see commodity prices once again sold off quite heavily. In fact, copper prices were up by 3.2 percent, so not surprising to see that material space leading the losses. But altogether, we really ignored some positive economic news coming through from companies, and in fact, it was just the macro issues which really dominated the day. If we have a look, Leighton's had a, a pretty good session. It has won a $1.2 billion contract, a rail contract in Hong Kong through its joint venture. And if we have a look at Leighton's intraday share price, we can just see what effect that announcement had on its stock. The announcement came at about quarter past three, and you can see that was enough to tick Leighton's into the black. We also saw some great comments coming through from Amcor, and Amcor shares did well today. We saw Challenger Financial Group come out to say that in the first quarter it had sold record annuities. West Farmers came out with a strong quarterly sales result, but the market sold it down on the outlook and Newcrest a little bit disappointing. So we saw a lot of good news, but unfortunately the market performance not reflecting that today. Malia Lee, your thoughts are on the uh, the Rio bid in terms of particularly its price? I mean, it, it's some suggestions it's a, well, a pretty hefty price that they put on the table. I guess it's a little bit surprising Rio Tinto making this move into uh, uranium, but it isn't a huge amount of money it is looking to spend. Um, but if we have a look at Rio's experience in uranium, it's mostly with ERA, where it owns that 68% stake. And if we have a look at ERA, it is the longest producing uranium asset here in Australia. If we have a look, it's been producing for more than 30 years, but in that time it hasn't really been able to bolster its assets or be become the front runner. In fact, Paladin, which has been operating for about a third of that time is much bigger in terms of its resource and in terms of what it's been able to do in terms of building up that particular asset and that company. So I guess this capital raising by ERA all about trying to uh, access more uranium from that range of mine in the Northern Territory. But Rio Tinto is saying, look, it is trying to invest in uh, the, the large uranium producing countries and regions of the world. So it is looking at Canada and it's looking at buying into a junior exp Walrus, obviously looking to develop uh, this particular resource and we know that Rio Tinto is interested in long life, low cost, large assets. Mm. So really looking at developing uh, these assets in uh, northern Saskatchewan. So an interesting move by Rio Tinto. Initially those uranium miners did get a significant boost. We saw uh, stocks like Extract Resources, Bannerman which had been uh, under takeover interest by uh, by Hanlong up by about one and a half percent in the morning and we also saw Paladin doing very well up by about three percent in the morning but by the end of the session extract Bannerman we saw losses there Paladin was flat and ERA never even participated so altogether a bit of uh, air going into those uranium miners early on in the session but by the end of the session looking quite negative.